Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I wanted to take you guys on a tour of my craft room but more specifically talk to you guys about how I organize my wire wrapping station. So I'm going to give you a quick look around first and then we're going to focus in on the wire wrapping. And for those of y'all who've been following along with me for a long time, you'll know that this is the first time ever that I have been like to me, seriously organized. To some of my crafter friends, um, this is gonna be like, really, this is seriously organized for you? And I'm like, shut up, this is, <laughs> I tried really hard. <laughs> but I did wanna share, coming from somebody who organization was just piles of chaos, um, that there is hope for us being able to find what we're looking for um, as soon as we set it down. Um, <laughs> though we lose it as soon as we set it down. Anyways, um, so this is, I'm gonna come to the far side of the room so you can see. This used to be our living room. And that used to be where our piano was, which is now actually on the other side of the wall. Like those two got flipped. So that's my wire wrapping station, and it makes me super happy, but I did want to show you, I also have in the northeastern corner of the room a little like art section and bookcase, like this is where I go over to do like colored pencil, inking, like different things, like so I'm subcategorizing my organization into this is art stuff. Um, well, I try, because um, there's a little bit of everything everywhere it seems. That's the boss's rocking chair um but i just and it's not all perfectly organized but at least it's in drawers and not just collecting dog dust or dog hair and you know dust bunnies but more organization these heavy duty shelves are phenomenal um because a part of what instigated organizing like this is we had particle board bookcases from you know the big box stores and they had collapsed under weight in the ravages of time so these hold like 600 pounds i think it said on the um and i don't know if that's per shelf or what but it can hold some crafty stuff so i am using a lot of these one dollar sterilite shoe boxes that are plastic um lots of the drawers i prefer the ones that have this horizontal support as opposed to the ones like how you'll see right here because once I put in uh, too much weight in those drawers, if I pull the drawer underneath it out, the whole thing collapses, um, which is no good. So this is our front room. Then this is what used to just be the craft room. That's Randy's station, still the same as he does. That's the piano where my old wire wrapping station set up was, which it was wire wrapping and polymer clay both in the same section together. And now I actually have a polymer clay specific area. So that's really nice, but we'll be going more in depth into that in a different video. And then we also moved the table to y'all's suggestions. Um, last time I rearranged the craft room into the center of this big room. It's a 14 foot by 21 foot long room. Um, and I love this, uh, the Eastern lighting cause it just, it's nice. But then that's my leather working station over here and just lots more organization. I really love those big racks. And then the room that I haven't gotten to yet, which is will give you a little bit more of an inkling of how I'm usually organized, the paint room. It's bad. <laughs> okay, so let us check out the wire wrapping station. And to give you guys a little bit more of backstory, um, Randy and I started our business about 10 years ago, back in, uh, 2008, so 10 years at the time of recording, um, but we were in our one-bedroom apartment, um, which was a tiny apartment, first off. Second off, I did not have, we had, like, no money, um, we were college kids, it, it's just, like, there was, it was not like this at all. It was a mess. Um, a lot of dollar store organizers which are still great but it's like they didn't have a lot of selection um a lot of my beads were like exclusively from like Hobby Lobby or Michaels which again is still great but I didn't have the selection that I was looking for and then I discovered the Ring Lord and Fire Mountain Gems and they took all of my money <laughs> but I I wanted to put a lot of emphasis on I have been building my for lack of a better term collection of crafty tools supplies and materials for a decade 
like intensely not just as a hobby but like I've been doing this professionally every single day for 10 years so um that gives me a lot of opportunity to be able to invest in um my parawire collection of bulk spools um it, it allows me to invest and so many of y'all have been so generous too in sending me tools that you've made or materials or it's just like you guys have really showered a lot of generosity on me so i realize that um i feel like my crafty area is exceptional beyond my wildest dream and i don't think is is typical for um if i had been a hobbyist or even if like i'd been doing it professionally for you know nine years it was not like this until y'all came into my life so thank you for that but focusing in now um the bones of my wire wrapping craft station are a rolly cart from michael's um Downside of those is dust and dog hair, which is the bane of my existence, do will get in there. Um, so I try to not store anything in there that's not packaged up inside of it to keep like the dust and stuff up. Because it's different to like wipe the dust off of like a bag or an organizer than it is to be like, great, there's a ton of like dog fur all mixed in with these feathers or you know, whatever. Um, old particle board bookcase from gosh, like 13 years ago. I think I had that like in high school actually, I don't know. Um, an old sewing desk, this is actually the top opens up and you could fit a sewing machine there on the inside, but I haven't used it for that in so long because I take up so much space when I'm sewing. Um, but it does have very nice heavy duty drawers. This is given to me by um, a good friend. Uh, he was like, while well, I was in high school, he's my friend's dad, um, is my friend's dad, <laughs> still his dad. Didn't quit that. Um, he was a, a junk guy. He would go and he would like he drove the truck that picked up like stuff that people would just put out on the curb to get rid of, and it still had the original like Serger sewing machine in it. Not Serger Singer sewing machine. Words are really hard, and that's my first cup of half finished coffee over there. So I'm still trying to kick it into gear. So thank you for being patient with me. But it still had all the notions in the drawers and everything, and it seemed a lot of misuse and a lot of love um over over the the past 13 years but i love this desk it's nice heavy duty solid wood um but i've also done just as much wire wrapping on like a folding four foot table um but i found i only really need that much surface area because if i have more than that i just grow piles on it um, and also a lot of the time I'll just use a lap desk too, uh, depending on where I'm sitting. Now our newest addition is the pegboard backdrop, which you can see here, this has been a complete and total game changer. I'm using um, an array of the two and a half inch pegs, as well as like the four inch and the six inch pegs to kind of hold everything on. I really like the two inch pegs though, because they're very stable they have this like three points of connection so they're not like wobbling around everywhere and they're just the right depth that I can fit a large pair of wire spool onto them without it poking through the papery sticker on the front. Um, I have my wire organized by size horizontally and by color vertically um, and so on my big board and I'm actually going to get this flipped around so you guys can get a closer look at what I'm looking at. Oh, wait, before I do that, then I have over here on the far side, I'm going to actually pan out so that you can see, because my lighting set up too, I have a ring light and a box light, like a fill light, or soft box, I guess they're called, um, not just for recording, but I really like having very bright light whenever I'm doing wire wrapping, because my eyesight's starting to go on me. Oh, and then I also have, like, Christmas lights, just just cause little fairy lights um i have this was my dad's shelf um like ever since before i was born i think he put like plates on it or something but i um but so i it, it's not perfect for what i'm doing but i keep it for sentimental reasons and the crystal light containers from like the drink mix uh are perfect for storing bulk chainmail rings i have found and then i also have a bunch of little canisters that were sent to me by my good friend jim um, that are also perfect for storing beads and that was just a really nice way to be able to on a glance be able to see what's up um, 
and I have a little bit more room to grow into it, which is the first time in my crafty life that I've been able to not just have something be just spilling over right from the get-go. Now this here is made from eight inch by one inch shelves, like boards, just screwed together on the sides, and it is the perfect size for uh, the, all these bead trays and different things, and it's just, that's what I'm keeping all of my organization on now, and it's a lot stronger than the particle board. Um, I don't think the shelves are going to, I'm not going to have to worry about the shelves dipping as badly, even underneath the weight. Uh, but yeah, he had made it for, uh, my bonus dad, Fred, had made it for DVDs, um, which they fit just perfectly onto the shelf, but I took all the DVDs off and put them in boxes and then put my, my bead, my bead containers on there. And then I also have some of the small Sterilite drawers just for storing more stuff and, um, some odds and ends. It gets progressively less organized as we go up to the top. So that's the bones of the craft area just right there so here on the side I have my pliers just hanging over the rail of the drawer um, a lot of my pliers have these style connections if you can kind of see there and I found that if I hang it over the edge of something like this metal rack I've actually broken a lot of pliers because that would get stuck beneath like the lip of the metal. So I do prefer a nice wide metal rod to put them over as opposed to something that might get in there and obstruct them. So here, um, just a loose little peg for some, you know, uh, my less used tools. Uh, and this pegboard was probably the best investment I've ever made in organizing because it was like ten dollars for the pegboard another fifteen for all the different hardware that went on it not including i already had the desk organizer and i already had this set of drawers that you're going to see as we pan off to the left but um it, it gave me a place to be able to vertically organize everything <clears throat> so some screwdriver holder perfect for scissors some extra like a uh, jewelry as, as I get done with it I'll kind of hang it there and it's my get to it in a minute pile this was just a, an office like a desk organizer and but I liked the drawer that slides out and I like that it organizes things day planners pens odds and ends like some more files and stuff but here I have my para wire and I have five colors that I use the most that's um, vintage bronze, antique copper, natural copper, titanium, and silver plated silver. And then the four sizes that I use the most are 18 gauge, 20 gauge, 26 gauge, and 28 gauge. So these are the ones that after 10 years of experience, I know I am, <laughs> they were all out of the 26 gauge when I was ordering bulk school. So I've got a bunch of it off to the side, but um, it's like, I am always going to be using these sizes and these colors at least. Um, so I have those, like I showed you before, on those two and a half inch pegs. And then off to the side of that, we have some para wire in their more standard size spools. Because these bulk ones, like this is 200 feet of the 18 gauge, 2,000 feet of the 28 gauge, and this one's um, 150 feet. So it, th these are what I take with me whenever I go traveling, because I don't need all of that wire with me. Um, and I just have these guys hung. These are, you know, um, either excess or traveling colors or something like this one here. Um, this was actually sent to me for me to experiment with it because it was the teal and the color kind of came off a little bit. And I was like, huh, because I've never in my time of working with Parawire run into that. And so I was going to be doing more experimentation with that just to see what its limits were. But these guys have those nice little organizers on there, like the little hangy spots. So... Now, so this is my camera tripod that's broken, so I have a ribbon tied on it to hold it in place. But it just attaches to that shelf there. Um, I'm going to move that out of the way. And so here, these are, they were three for a dollar in the kitchen organization section. They're for, like, organizing your silverware or junk drawer. And they're just on some little, like, pegboard cup hooks that are hanging loose. That way I can... Swing them side to side. And there's the dogs freaking out about the mailman. But this is where I put all of my wire that um, some of the older spools or some of the different brands don't have. 
sorry, <laughs> off camera, don't have the little hangy thingy. Uh, and so I just set them in there. And again, these are things that I, I'm never, I wouldn't buy a bulk spool of that color because I don't use it that much, but it's still nice to have on hand. And then also just for storing either projects that I need to get pictures of or that I need to find a home for. I've got toothpicks, a clamp that was very gen perfectly useful and very generously given to me. And then ear hooks and clasps and just more storage. And then, of course, my junk baskets. Um, now, this one is actually my square and half round pair of wire. And then this one's the only one that's like junk. It was like projects that I need to get to or jewelry that I, I, I need to find a place for. Or, you know, just the odds and ends. But it keeps it up off of my work surface, which is invaluable to me. Now, spot for hanging hammers. I get my chain from the Ring Lord, and then I'll cut it into segments. These are needing to be made into chains for sale out of our booth. And this is also like a batch of charms. Whenever, uh, Randy and I call it mass producing handmade things, but it's whenever we're gearing up for a show, we'll be like, okay, we need uh, 10 of this necklace style. So I'll get all, all the materials for making 10 of that necklace, and then we'll make it in like, all, kind of all in one go and just tag team it together. Um, I have some different displays up here for taking pictures of my jewelry for like uh, the YouTube thumbnails and stuff. Um, but this here is how I store my cabochons. And you see I'm out of quite a few colors, um, well not colors, but types. Um, so I get most of my cabochons off of eBay, but I get a lot of them off of Fire Mountain Gems as well. Whenever I do, I'll put the I'll peel off the tag and fold it up and put it in there. That way I know um, the item number and I can look it up for pricing if I need to, or just to kind of replace. Got a little bit of tiger's eye in there and an odd, pretty but not tiger's eye. Um, but I got this in the automotive section of a big box store. Like um, the plastic of these actually holds up really well with um, raw polymer clay as well. So I actually have three more of these that I use for polymer clay. But this is how I like to store my cabochons and I have four unmarked drawers for like, um, these are my different hammer heads for my hammer with interchangeable heads. Um, and if I get like a cabochon that isn't one of these types, I'll either put it in with one that's very similar to it or just pop it into a, a spare drawer. Um, okay, so here we are over to the bead organization. Um, oh my gosh, best thing ever, dapping set, Bex, you're the best. Um, <laughs> but up top, got my skull collection that I use for shaping thermoplastics over. Um, Randy has some toy guns from Walmart <laughs> for Halloween, um, firing bricks, like just things that I'm still settling in. So not everything like that's a whole big bin of stuff that just needs organized thing, a catnip because I love my cat, um, just different things. And so we're getting here. We have my thingamajig and some plants, some more crimp beads, like a uh, room to actually grow into things, more baggies for um, I'll make beads or sometimes buy bulk beads and uh, divvy them up into smaller bags for on Patreon in our craft crates because I'm like, oh, well, I used these in projects this month, so I'll kind of send them out to everybody. But again, I have such a huge assortment of different shaped and size organizers just as I kind of grew into them over the years. Um, but this is going to bring us into talking more about my scrap wire bin whenever I if I've got more than like this much of wire left over of like a 18 or 20 gauge I'll save it um in a scrap bin to draw from later and if it's smaller than that I'll put it into a scrap bin that we take to the recycling center like about once a year um and get like five bucks back um but I have on the bottom shelf we have our chainmail rings which I'm going to get this flipped around and show you guys a little bit more uh, closely, but I try to have it organized kind of by stack. So I'll have all of my chip beads in a tray together. Um, here I have, and again, it's not a perfect system, but I have a lot of my faceted bicone crystals and Swarovskis and different things, but I also have, you know, some other bits added in with it. But for the most part, I want to be able to pull out a tray and know these are the, you know, 
these are going to be my faceted bicones. And then I've got trays like this one that um, it's kind of, I would just get an overflow. And so there's, I, this has cube beads in it, but it also has seed beads and these little like lava, like there's not really much of a rhyme or reason to it. <clears throat> and that kind of just happens. It's almost like your own sock drawer. You'll get to know it. But I'm trying to find one of the ones that is like perfect in my heart for how I like to have my beads organized. And of course I cannot find it. Where you at, Ben? Okay, here's one that this actually had, I had buyed in, I had, pur buyed, I had purchased in bulk uh, from Fire Mountain Gems. And so for the longest time, this just had bulk six millimeter uh, gems in it. But then I also have other things kind of filling in. Yeah, six millimeter round gemstone beads. Now, where is that bead tray though? <laughs> ah, see, so it's, it looks good, but I still don't know where everything is. Um, chip beads, again, I had gotten these from Fire Mountain Gems because I really like their, you know, stacking discount kind of stuff, and I have the, uh, the tag in there with it. I actually get two or three trays just of chip beads. Um, here's one. Can I get it out? There we go. So predominantly in my work, I use 10 millimeter, 8 millimeter, 6, and 4 millimeter sized beads. And so here at a glance, you can see I'm pretty low on my 8 millimeter rose quartz, but I'll have them stacked kind of that way and have them organized. You know, in a perfect world, again, I would have a tray and it's like, this is all of my rose quartz and it's all in that tray. Um, but the, num the numbers just don't always work out like that. But so I've got rose quartz, hematite, uh, Amaz amazonite, yeah, and sodalite. And then just some odds and ends kind of poked in there as I have them. But uh, it's not every day that I'll go through and like, it's I'm not even an annual thing that I'll go through and organize my bead trays to kind of get everything in together. But sometimes like if I get, if I really deplete my, um, let me get this camera turned around. Sometimes with the bead trays, if I've really depleted, like th just everything in that bead type is very, very low and I've reordered it all at once, I usually keep an extra empty or empty-ish bead tray or two on hand just so that I have room to kind of shuffle you know all the beads from one into another and you know kind of work it around that way um, and oftentimes in patreon too with my patreon packages I'll be going through my bead selection and be like I loved these beads so much that I never used them and I'll put them in a baggie and send them along to somebody else because it's like maybe they'll you know clearly I have not used this um, and it makes me happy to be able to give something that I loved to y'all. Um, and so if it ever looks like you got bits and pieces of like an old necklace or something, it's probably a good chance that you got bits and pieces of an old necklace that I had made and just never could get, have it in myself to sell it or, uh, it had broken and, or just something. So it's, there's try, I try to have at least a story or something behind each thing that you get in your Patreon craft crates. Um, in addition to the cabochons and stuff, but I want to bring you guys down here now to see how I organize my chain mail rings because that was something that we were specifically asked about. And this is one of my very first bead trays. You can tell by the layers of dust and stuff on there. Um, and that both of the little handles had completely broken off. Um, I really dislike this style of tray because it has these removable slides, which seems great at first, but you almost have to glue them down just to keep them from, if you're rummaging to get the rings out, out of like the bottom of the bin. Um, Cause these were some of the rings that I actually still have left over from like 11 years ago when Randy bought, bought me the um, Ring Lord uh, kit that he had gotten me for Christmas that's started this whole mess um but these are ring sizes that I just ended up not using very much I had them organized um horizontally by 
metal type and then vertically by ring size like both um like this one here is 20 gauge 5 30 seconds um which that was the inner diameter of the rings but that has greatly deteriorated over the years like that whole system i kind of just started putting stuff in where it goes or wherever it went really not where it goes but our more modern preferred way especially with things that we don't coil and cut in house so per predominantly like our anodized aluminum because we're still purchasing that from like the ring lord and cnt designs and stuff we'll have it by size across um like uh What's the word for that? I just said it horizontally, we have it by ring size and then vertically we have it by color. So again, just like with the beads that I use, I predominantly use um, 16 gauge 5 sixteenths, 16 gauge 1 fourth inch, 18 gauge 1 fourth inch, and 18 gauge 3 sixteenths. Whenever I'm buying rings, those are like the four sizes because I'm like, I use it in everything. Um, sometimes I'll purchase... Um, like a different ring size or something but then i'll just put that like in a baggie in a drawer or something but for the most part these are the ones that i use the most and then again we'll have it you know by the colors um and you can see i'm quite depleted on some of my sizes as well and i have two bead trays of this of the chainmail rings you can see i'm super wiped out on these i, I haven't placed a ring lord order in ages it feels like um and then I also have a system over here that has no rhyme or reason to it, but this is how I like to take chainmail rings for traveling. Um, because often, and you can see I've actually dropped, like, because it would fall out of the van or get knocked off the cart or something. But when, when this breaks, not all of the rings go everywhere. Whereas whenever one of these trays break, everything goes everywhere. Everything goes everywhere. It's a nightmare. Um, whereas with these, it's like worst case scenario, like it, the top pops off where at least I can scrape the rings together and they're all like, there might be like some rubble in there, but it's predominantly that one ring size. Um, and I also would bring like little organizers like this for it's like, uh, this is 18 gauge, one eighth inch. And I don't really use that in every single color, but I do like to have it. So we keep that on hand. Um, but yeah, I predominantly do keep the chainmail rings in these crystal light bottles. Like it's, um, a drink mix that you can get at the store and it is just the perfect size and shape for holding a whole bunch of chainmail rings and they just fit right there on that shelf just like that. Um, and so whenever we coil and cut them ourselves, that's how we store them for our own purposes. Um... And I also have Ritz cracker containers that I use for chainmail rings as well. We're extremely depleted right now, so a lot of my storage containers for chainmail are just empty. Um, but the containers themselves don't go bad, so we still have that going. Um, how do I store for traveling was a question that was asked to me. And for the longest time, I used one of these sets of drawers, and I would have like wire stuff in one and chainmail stuff in another and I would bring actually this ring tray with me in the drawer or this bead tray that has just such an odd menagerie of it was like a rummage tray that um you know if somebody's like oh I like you know this but can you add this color bead to it I'll be like let me see what I have because uh I I'm the type that I want to have the stuff with me to be able to meet every single possible, you know, uh, thing. Like, I want to be prepared for every contingency, like, contingency plan. Um, and it got to the point where, like, we we're bringing all of this stuff to make, like, one or two modifications per show. Let's just tell people if they want something custom, they can order it, we'll make it, and ship it to them. Um, because it, we, we had run out of room. We were, we were traveling in our car. Uh, we had to fit our entire booth set up in a four-door, like, Chrysler Sebring. Um, and so whenever we upgraded to our van, oh, God, yeah, I brought, like, everything with me. But we still have to carry it. You still have to load it in. You still have to load it out. Um, so I have basically, I just take one of those $1 shoe boxes, <laughs> like, plastic shoe boxes, and toss in a couple of different wire colors, 
Um, and I do bring my full set of pliers with me just about every time because you never know when you're going to need pliers. And I'm usually teaching classes too. So I'll travel with, I've got those $1 shoe boxes, super, super hardy for just a dollar, um, with all of my wire wrapping stuff in one, all of the pliers in like two others it takes, and then all the chainmail stuff in another one. So we'll just transport them in those, but they stack on each other really nicely and they worked out a lot better than those plastic drawers. Um, what is the best way to store items was another question. We store our completed jewelry in tackle boxes um, just because that's what works for us. But in general, the best way to store items you're going to want to look at for your situation because I don't have kids. I can put stuff just out on shelves and I don't have to worry about it. I don't have friends with kids who live around here that come and visit me. So it's like my house is not at all child proof. Like I, I'd lose it if like somebody was like, like my sister, whenever her kids were younger, was like, hey, we're coming to visit. I'd be like, um, let's get a hotel <laughs> because I know it's not safe for a kid to come in here. They're going to be like choking on beads and electrocuting themselves on something, I'm sure. Um, my house is not kid friendly. So if you have children, you're going to know what you need, what, what isn't going to work for you. So I have confidence though that you'll find ways to kind of work around that. Also, my cat super old and lazy like she doesn't care about anything anymore um except for like eating and sleeping in that rocking chair she is so cute but even when she was younger she's not a particularly um naughty kitty I think there was once that she took a, a bead weaving project that I was doing for like a belly dance outfit and drag it through the house and turned it into a giant big knot like that was it and then after that I just closed the door to the craft room at night to keep her out of my workstation and sometimes I'll come through and she'll have chewed up some wire but she's in her elder years now and the playful kitten in her is gone if we well not gone entirely sorry I'm like flashing back to every time I like play with her in the kitchen and she's so cute with her little like but she's got about 30 seconds of being playful in her before she's like ah, I'm hungry and like goes and eats some more <laughs> Hashtag me in my old age. Um, <laughs> but if we had a kitten in the house, whew, this would be a completely different setup, I am sure. I would not just have stuff loose and hanging because she would destroy it. The kitten would destroy it, I am sure. So please, like, this is, this is one in an infinite ways to have a craft room set up. And I bet if you come back six months from now, it'll have evolved into something else also. So you hear Randy cringing in the other room like, oh, God. I don't want to rearrange again <laughs> but um the best way to store things for me what I look at is is it going to keep the beads in and is it going to keep the dust and dirt and dog hair out because something like this this bead container here is probably the worst one ever there's no secure latch holding the lid shut um, even if it tips over, even if the lid they did, did stay completely shut, there's little divots that if the finer beads were to roll over, um, they just get all mixed together inside of themselves anyways. So you want to be able to make sure that it keeps what you're keeping in and keeps the dirt and stuff out because there's nothing worse than, um, just gosh, having a canister of flour explode in your kitchen and now there's flour all over everything because you were organizing in these drawers. Um, and it, Or having a house plant spill or leak water and it leaks through everything. Um, and it's just having things, for me what I look for is containment and consistency. I really love it when all of my organizers are the same size for the most part. I do have some that are more specifically for small beads, some that are much more specifically for medium sized beads, and then the thicker trays that are better for like really big beads or bulkier items. Um, and then beyond that, like, I don't know, I have just as much luck with dollar store organizers as what I do with the more expensive ones from like Michaels and stuff that are like name brand and super fancy. Um, but it's, sometimes it is worth it to spend the extra money to get something that is going to have a good closure on it that's still holding on. Something like this tray here. At first, I hated these stinking, I was like, oh, it doesn't match all my other ones. But these handles are gonna hold up a lot better 
than the ones that were on those trays that because these ones actually have a proper pin hinge um whereas trays like this one is just a bit of plastic and after time that plastic is going to wear through and break off and you're going to end up with the trays like how i have my older chainmail in um where it just doesn't have the latches on it and what good is that um whereas these guys here are my absolute favorite because they just have a little latchy doodle there like it just like a tupperware kind of snaps on but it also has these ridges that can keep each individual compartment contained and then they're also rounded on the bottom so if you get tiny little beads stuck in there you can just scoop it out with your finger and everything's okay because it's i hate having to fight with a tray to get my beads out of it. i'm like just give me my beads like ah. and then a frustrated von just make makes messes and it's a nightmare um but yeah i like for them to be able to stack is really nice if they can fit into drawers is really nice um and it's just just getting it stored getting it off of my desk and not just knocking around loose was probably the best thing i could have ever done for organizing my craft room um and then also um, when I'm organizing my wire while traveling, this was a really wonderful specific question, so thank you. Um, yeah, I had posted on my Patreon page to everybody, uh, pledgers or not, to be like, hey, Q&A time. So keep an eye out for my Patreon um, polls whenever I'm like, because I'm going to be doing another Q&A for my polymer clay organization as well as my leatherworking organization. So, <laughs> But the question was, how do I organize my wire while traveling? Do I do it by color? or by size. I personally organize by size and a very specific example that happens a couple times a show is um, or an event is uh, somebody will be looking at our finger rings or our ear cuffs which both of those I predominantly use 20 gauge wire for um, but they'll be like oh I love this but I'd like to order something custom and I'll be like okay and then uh, I'll pull out my wire selection in that gauge of wire because I'm like if I don't have like because I've got different colors in 24 and 26 gauge than what I do in 20 and 18 gauge so if they see the 24 gauge and they're like oh I love that one and I, I don't want to have to be like I, I'm sorry I can't like I don't want to get their expert but they're like super excited that's perfect and they'll be like no and like smack their dreams down um, <laughs> I, I know it's just a finger ring but um if I can just keep just focus their creativity on to these are the colors we get to choose from then it keeps them from getting overwhelmed it keeps me from having to tell them no um which i hate doing that i'm like you're at a craft show you want to give me money i don't want to ever tell you no ever <laughs> um but uh and that way they can kind of choose um you know from that selection there and that's typically kind of the way i'll go about it but again just get the stuff there find what works for you don't don't hesitate to experiment and try different things until you find the perfect way for you to do it and that's something that you may gosh if you're lucky you may stumble right into it um it may take you 10 years <laughs> so like some people <laughs> so those were all of the questions that I had gotten by the time of recording so if you have more questions please leave them down below and I'll try my best to get back to you and also y'all can discuss with each other how do you do it like because I learned so much from you guys and I'm not just saying that to be like nice or something but it's I really do like y'all inspire me every day with your creativity um either just the struggles that you face and go through and succeed up against and like Y'all are my biggest motivators, so please keep being awesome, and it's an honor to be, even just if this is the only video of mine that you'll ever watch, I'm really glad that you spent this time with me, and that I got to be that little part of your crafty journey, so. <laughs> but leave comments down below, like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Please consider checking me out over on Patreon. You don't have to be a pledger or anything like that, though it is really nice, but it's, I use Patreon as my foremost social media platform because it is the easiest for me to like 
actually be able to see people's comments and like reply to you and stuff and you don't have to pledge just have an account um and that way you can see whenever i post polls and i do my weekly digest that way if youtube isn't notifying you of my new videos you'll get a weekly email um being like hey these are the videos that came out this week you'll also get notifications about 15 minutes before i go live that i am going live um and that's something that a lot of y'all had been like geez youtube and i'm like yeah geez youtube um but i figured we'd take that into our own hands that way i don't keep missing you guys because i love it whenever you come and hang out with me during the live streams but yeah okay so i started rambling I will see y'all in my next video. So until then, happy crafting. Bye. <laughs>